Hello and welcome to Crop Science 6049. In today's lesson, we are going to look at gamete formation in plants. By the end of this lesson, you must be able to describe the formation of pollen grains and also to describe the formation of a mature ovule. Now let's take a look at how a pollen grain is formed. Pollen grain formation it occurs in the anthers of flowering plants. The anther contains four pollen sacs or microsporangia and within the pollen sacs are pollen mother cells known as microsporocytes. So this one is an anther and it contains four pollen sacs and the cells that are within the pollen sacs are what are known as pollen mother cells. The pollen grain mother cell undergoes two successive developmental phases which are microsporogenesis and microgametogenesis which leads to the production of pollen grains also known as microgametophytes. So this microsporocyte undergoes two developmental phases, microsporogenesis and microgametogenesis. And during microsporogenesis, there is the production of a microspore. And the microsporocyte, it undergoes two mitotic divisions, that is first meiosis and second meiosis, and it forms four microspores, which are known as tetrads. These microspores, they then further develop into a mature pollen grain. Microsporogenesis comprises of the events which leads to the formation of the haploid unicellular microspore. Microgametogenesis it comprises of events which leads to the progressive development of microspores into mature microgametophytes or pollen grains. And during microgametogenesis, each microspore undergoes nuclear division to produce a generative nucleus. So this one is a generative nucleus. And the vegetative nucleus, which is also known as the pollen tube nucleus, which are involved in how pollen grain achieves fertilization. Finally, the microspores form a double wall of the pollen grain. The outer wall, called the exine, made up of sporopollenin, and the inner wall, called the entine, made up of cellulose and pectins. Now let's take a look at the ovule formation. An immature ovule consists of cells known as nucellus and is enclosed and protected by two integuments except for a narrow channel at the tip of the micropyle. One of the nucellus becomes large and more outstanding than the rest and this is the embryosic mother cell. So here we have got this cell that is known as the embryosic mother cell that has become large it used to be part of the nucellus, but it is enlarged. The embryosic mother cell divides by meiosis to produce four haploid megaspores. So this embryosic mother cell is divided by meiosis to form these four haploid megaspores. And three nearest to the micropyle degenerate. This three year will degenerate and only one will remain. And the remaining cell enlarge to form an embryo sac. So this one will, will enlarge and it will form an embryo sac. The embryo sac nucleus undergoes repeated mito mitotic division, three in total, until eight nuclei are produced. Four will be at each end of the embryo sac. So this embryo sac nucleus divides three times by mitosis 
until eight nuclei are produced. Four will be at each end. And one from each end will move to the center and these ones will become the polar nuclei. So one nucleus from each polar group moves to the center of the embryo sac and these are the polar nuclei. The remaining six, three at each end develop cytoplasm and they become separated by cell walls. Three cells at the opposite end of the micropyle are called antipodal cells. So these ones are called antipodal cells and they serve no, no further function. One cell at the micropyle end remains and the rest, which are called synergies, they degenerate. And these ones, two of them degenerate, which are called the synergies. And the remaining one is called the egg cell. It's important for you to be able to draw and label the structure of a mature ovule. Now for your homework, go and define the following stages of prophase in meiosis. Leptotin, zygotin, pachytin, and diplotin. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, additions, and subtractions, please write them in the comment section. If you have benefited from this video, please click the like button.